Hello people and welcome to episode 3 of the McCulloch 152 restoration. Yes, everything in front of me is looking very, very shiny. If you haven't seen this series from the beginning, you can go back and watch episode 1 and 2 and enjoy all of that excitement from the beginning. But if not, welcome. Welcome to our channel. We are here restoring a McCulloch 152. And yes, everything's looking very, very shiny in front of me. But what did it look like before? Well, we've got a donor saw, which is quite handy. Anyone doing a restoration? always loves a donor vehicle. That's what it looked like before, but now it's much shinier. I've spent hours upon hours upon hours of my precious time, well it's not that precious, but you know, getting all of this thing. We're Hayes Machinery, this is our YouTube channel, please consider subscribing, let's crack on. Oh, on that, okay. And welcome to another Hayes Machinery. <laughs> So if you want to see how I got these so shiny, not gonna lie, it's old paint, old lead paint possibly from the 1960s, because that's when this saw was originally made. It didn't want to come off. I used the old, um, you know, what do you call it? Paint stripper, spray on paint stripper, which I thought, yeah, it's gonna bubble up beautifully, but did it? Not so well. So it took a little bit more work and a lot more elbow grease to get it to the condition it's in now. Check out this little clip and um, see the process I took, which is compressed into a few seconds, and I can assure you it took a lot longer than that. That was the easy bit. Now for the harder bit, which is the restoration. You know, making all the bits that aren't very good much, much better. For instance, this back handle here is very, very rough. It's corroded. It's where it's been sat on the probably a workshop floor for many years and the aluminium has been eaten away. Well, we want to make that rough bit smooth. How are we going to do it? Well, we're going to use some body filler. Is that the right thing to use? Probably not. I could probably use some liquid metal or I could do some aluminium welding or whatever it is at the top of it to try and get that smooth again. But no, we're going to use filler because I've got some. Right, so it's disclaimer time. I'm about to do something I've never done before. I have no idea what I'm doing. So please put in the comments of how many mistakes I've made. I've watched a few little videos of how to do this or how to mix body filler. Oh, golden juice. This golden juice is probably like important. And then you've got your hardened which I've already suppled up. Oh, let's try a bit of the smooth stuff on here first, look, really. Oh, look at this. Is this gonna, oh, it looks like it's filling the gaps. Let's speed up the old film wheel. Brrr. So I could probably play with this all day and probably get no further forward. But I'm quite happy with that. I have no idea if I've done it right. Please tell me how I can do it better. But until I sand it down, I don't know how good that's going to turn out. Because to me, it looks absolutely fine. We're going to put that to one side, let it dry. We've got some more prep work to do before we then do some painting. Well, I'm very, very pleased with that. That is amazing. Yeah! <laughs> Everything is now looking very, very shiny and colourful. Yes, we have some black, we have some yellow. It is looking absolutely beautiful. So did someone say it's time for a reassembly? Reassembly? Yes. Right, let's crack on and put it back together. So first job is going to be putting the point and condenser and the flywheel and the coil and everything back onto this side of the engine. Let's hope it all fits and all goes back in as it should. Fingers crossed. Let's go. Thank you. 
what we've we done so far, we have got the point and condenser and flywheel and coil, uh, carbs back in, the clutch, the exhaust, the lower handle is on there. And now it's time to put some sexy bits on. The oil tank, we have got the gasket. So hopefully that should be absolutely fine. Just don't really need to make a new one. It's perfectly good condition. And then we're gonna have to use gasket sealer or silicon sealer around the front there to be able to get that to go back together. So the screws that came out of this have all been beautifully cleaned. Yeah, that way. That way round. <gasps> nice and slowly until they're nearly there. Oh, there. All right, that is the oil tank on. This has taken absolutely hours, by the way. There's no getting away from it. So it's time to put the fuel tank on the fuel tank. There we go. But anyway, put the fuel tank together. But we do need, just a thought, we need the fuel pipe inside first. We've already got the new filter on from when we first originally ran it up. That's fine. Clip the fuel pipe on inside. There we are, right, that is all in now. Got some nice bond lock here, and um, then fix our cover on with that, because we're not gonna be able to make a gasket for that very successfully. Obviously, they don't make them anymore. I've never used one of these tubes before, I normally use a squeezy tube, but... Oh my God, it's coming out quicker than I thought it was going to. Well, I should have started at the bottom, and then it'd have been hidden. Oh no, James. This is the reason I painted it black, so you can see it. I've now gone the wrong way again, because I should have come the other way. Anyone tell that I don't have a steady hand? It's quite successful. There we go. Did I actually just do something right? Put more screws in round before we get too carried away. So it's now time to do some arty farty stuff. Yeah, I've done the main painting. As you'll know, painting is not my forte, but now we have got a stencil. Yes, it's got McCulloch written on it. What else would we put on the chainsaw bar? Well, more yellow paint, paint it on there. We've got the decals to do. Let's bang on. <laughs> Oh, scary, scary. It's yellow, hopefully that's good. Oh, don't touch it, don't touch it, James. Leave it. Let's roll. On the home straight. Yes, all the detail is done, even with my shaky hands. I'm pretty pleased, I'm quite happy. That's probably my favorite bit I've done about the whole thing. The saw is starting to come together. It's looking wonderful. It's looking very black and yellow. Let's bang on with this last bit, get all the panels on. I've had a bit of a problem with the paint on here. It's starting to bobble a little bit. I have no reason, no idea why. Someone would like to tell me why, perhaps Actually, Martin from Retro Restore, he does a lot of this sort of stuff. Perhaps you could let me know why, why my paint keeps bobbling on my aluminium. It's almost like there's air coming out of the aluminium. Is there a reason for that? Is there, how could I have avoided that? It'd be great to know. If you haven't checked out Martin's channel, Retro Restore, check him out. Absolutely cool, awesome guy. Now we hopefully have got an on and off switch. And stop. Fuel cap. Before that fills with rubbish and dust. We don't want that in there. <gasps> that fits on like a dream. Oil cap. Oh, these little, oh, hang on, that needs a bit of a clean. Oh. <laughs> See, think about it, we've got to put that cover on there first before this goes on, probably. Give it a little bit of a blow. Normally solves most problems. Perfect. I haven't got a new air filter. I haven't been able to find one. So I don't think it really got to worry, to be honest. Why doesn't that fit? Have I put that the wrong way around? Well, that's screwing down. The problem we've got is that that hole isn't lining up with the oil cap. What is going on here? I have no idea. There's nothing different, because we never took that apart. Right, so Will just had a bright idea, is did I actually, have I restored the wrong cover? The answer is yes, I did, because this one has an oval hole, and although it's dirty, fits on there perfectly. Whereas the one I've restored, and I restored that one because it is in much better condition than this one. Um, yeah, so I think I need to make an oval hole. Be right back. I'm gonna be here a while. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Let's go back to the paint shop with that now, don't we? Yes, we have a paint shop. No, we don't. We don't have a paint shop. I wish we did have a paint shop. 
Time to make a chain. Yes, it's 404, one of the biggest chains available. We don't use 404 very often, so we've got a very old roll here. And to cut it, where was I there? So you find the right one it's got to sit in. Make sure you've got a nice clean pin on the bottom and break it both sides. You've got to go through both rivets. Boom, boom. One broken chain. Once your chain is broken, nice little link, special link to put in there with the little rivets on. Pop them in there like so. Make sure your chain's the right way around, obviously. You don't want your teeth on the inside, do you? Wind it around there, and then you can wind up your rivet until you take up all the slack. So the slack's sort of even, sexy. Beautiful bit of chain join in there, eh? All right, just gonna put it on the saw and make it look pretty. Um, we're gonna tip this on the side, and we're gonna work on the recoil and recoil cover. Boom! So this is gonna be the hard bit, trying to fiddle this through. Get me lighter out of my pocket. All my up there. Nice and pointy, yes, nice and pointy. Inside, there we go. It's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. And then pull that through. Cool, so once you've got your rope in there, you can then pop on this one. Not very many of these you can do it like this. You can pop your rope through there, have a nice little washer on the end, put the washer over, and another nice little figure of eight knots. So around again, up over and up through. Put that nice and close to the top, but not too close. I didn't do my little lighter trick. There we go, look at that, beautiful. And then that shouldn't be too big to go back through that washer then. Looks good to me. You can then wrap this round. It should then dangle that out over there. Maybe your thumbs are steel. And then you get your top cover, top cover onto there. And then find your screws. Get that one in there. Yeah, a little bit of tension. Look at that. Making a piece of paintwork sandwich. Sexy. Bit of new hardware going in. Normally, you're doing this, you just put it on the bench, but I don't want to hurt the paintwork. It works! Yay! Going with the same plug that was in it before, we know it works. Don't shoot the paint, don't screw that extra little bit just because you think you could. Don't shoot the paint. There we are. We screw that one down into there. Don't feel long enough, but they don't go all the way out the other side, you see. Right, we should now be able to put a top cover on, Will. Do 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 do. Yep. Let me show you. Hang on. One last final touch. Because you've got the boring side. You've got the boring side. You want, you want to see this side. Looks great. Halleck 152 has been fully restored. She is looking bang tidy. Now with a new color scheme to make her pop. This powerhouse of a saw can pump out 87 cc of vintage power, all while weighing in at a staggering 10 kilos. Yes, 22 pounds of metal. You can honestly call her a piece of American muscle history. They certainly don't make saws like this anymore. Thank God, because it's bloody heavy.